In this film, you will experience the sights and sounds of North America's largest freshwater fish species and its deepest river canyon. As a team of fisheries professionals work together to expand the knowledge about the white sturgeon. Along the journey and between battles, you will learn some of what is known. Regional fisheries staff and crew members have diverse job responsibilities. Harvest monitoring and seasonal crew management, fish habitat improvements and project evaluations, traveling to and from meetings and training sessions, often at the speed of headlights. Frequently, their minds are more focused on highway miles than river markers while negotiating the web of responsibility. Monitoring Snake River white sturgeon takes the prowess of a predator and the competence to avoid becoming prey in the white water web that is the hallmark of the Hell's Canyon reach. The challenges of the canyon, the river, the fish, and the data collection require all hands on deck, and at times, all feet in the water. This reach of the Snake River is located in the Hell's Canyon National Recreation Area. It contains designated wild and scenic river sections. At 7,913 feet from the summit of He Devil Mountain to the mouth of Granite Creek on the Snake River, it is the deepest river canyon in North America. There are few roads across Hell's Canyon's 10 mile wide expanse. Three lead to public boat ramps. In the 79 miles between Heller Bar and Hell's Canyon Dam, there are 97 identified rapids. 14 of these have a technical difficulty rating of class three or greater. Only the most skilled jet boat pilots can safely navigate them. Long rapids with powerful irregular waves, dangerous rocks, and boiling eddies create a white water web that can entangle your boat and your life. It's fall in Hell's Canyon, and Chinook salmon are spawning. After they spawn, they die. Their carcasses are a historically significant food source for white sturgeon. Consequently, a piece of salmon belly meat on a large hook is an effective lure. 60 pound test mainline with an 80 pound leader and a large weight deliver the bait to the river bottom and hopefully an awaiting sturgeon and another data point. Hell's Canyon is home to the largest North American freshwater fish, the white sturgeon. Sturgeon evolved from an ancient offshoot of the bony fishes. Their skeletons are made of cartilage, like sharks, and they have bony plates called scutes instead of scales. This ancient body form has earned them the nickname, Swimming Dinosaurs. They are a popular sport fish. However, white sturgeon are vulnerable to overfishing because of their delayed age of maturation, which can range from 15 to 60 years or more for some females. And frequent spawning of once every two to 10 years by individual fish, slow growth and long lifespans also contribute to their vulnerability. Keep up with him. I'm backing up kind of fast. Don't let that rod get any slack in it. Okay, yeah, we're double teaming it. Running again. Hey, running. He's running. Go back, Don. 
Yep. Right. He's running. Go, go back. Idaho Department of Fish and Game manages Hell's Canyon Reach white sturgeon as a self-sustaining population supported by natural recruitment with no influence from hatchery reared fish. That's a good fish. Come on, I just did all that work for you. Come on. Ah. Oh, too strong. Idaho sturgeon populations have faced challenges from a history of overharvest and extensive changes to their river habitats, primarily as a result of the construction of dams. Idaho oh Department of Fish and God. Game has regulated the sturgeon sport fishery to catch and release opportunities only since 1971. The muscles are filling up with blood. <laughs> Dam construction resulted in population fragmentation. The Hell's Canyon Dam to Lower Granite Reservoir Reach and one other are the only two of nine reaches that support viable populations characterized by self-sustaining natural recruitment. Dams reduce peak flows and their frequency, which are important for spawning. Depending on the time of the year, dams can increase or reduce water temperatures. Some changes may benefit sturgeon growth, and others may be a detriment. In addition, dams have reduced or eliminated an anadromous fish run which were a historically abundant food source. No, oh, I don't want you to take line from me. Finally, dams potentially reduce productivity by locking up nutrients in upriver reservoirs, thereby reducing food and growth. Here he comes. James grab his lip. Roll him, roll him. Nice job, nice job. Fish are measured, length and girth, and check for previous marks. Marks provide valuable information about survival, growth rates, and migration patterns. They are also inspected for hook injuries and scanned for internal metal, which may include hooks. Sturgeon are internally marked with a tiny microchip known as a pit tag and externally by removing a bony plate called a scute on the fish's side to indicate the fish was captured previously. Finally, the capture or recapture location is recorded.
Literature suggests white sturgeon can reach up to 10 feet long and weigh over 1,100 pounds. In the Hell's Canyon reach of the Snake River, 10-foot sturgeon are rare. A 30-year collaborative study is looking at the growth, movement, and mortality of these unique fish. Over 4,000 sturgeon have been handled since 1990. Fewer than 10 exceeded 10 feet in length. The largest sampled was 10 feet, 8 inches, and maxed out a 500-pound scale. One measured 54 inches around the belly. They can take more than an hour to land with a fishing rod and reel. A 10-foot, 4-inch sturgeon was landed in 2021. This was the seventh time since it was first caught in 2010 when it measured 9 feet, 10 inches. Eleven years later, it was only 6 inches longer. This was a long day. The crew woke up in Idaho, got onto a boat in Washington, worked in Idaho, and will eat dinner and sleep in Oregon. This was a great day. Using that breakfast burrito. <laughs> yeah, look, well, them's is hybrid turkeys. Chop chucker. Chop chucker. <laughs> Are you snacking? No, I'm oh, barely no, hooked. That's a cool fish. Yeah, no, it's barely that hooked. Grab that and grab that mouth. Grab it. It's upside down. Grab the mouth. Here, all right, let go. I'm going to sweep them over on the other side. Two, one, three total. Three delta delta. Zero, zero, seven, 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 nine. Two, boy, two, six. I like to take my thumbnail and stick it in there. Make sure the tag doesn't turn to come up. Bye. Thank you.
There appears to be dramatic growth rate differences between juveniles living in the lower granite reservoir and those in the free-flowing Snake River in Hell's Canyon. Sturgeon living in the reservoir that are less than 40 inches in length grow at an annual rate of around 6 to 12 inches through the first four years of life. Similar sizes in the free-flowing Hell's Canyon reach grow on average less than one inch per year. After exceeding the 40 inch threshold, the growth rate is similar for sturgeon in the reservoir and the free-flowing reaches. Two four. Two four. One nine. One nine. Hook location? Two. Actually looks pretty fishy. Come on, grip that. Hit him. You got him. Woo! Many juveniles in Hell's Canyon remain in the same pool for 20 or more years. There are differences in the growth rates between the pools where fish were captured. The slowest growth rates were observed in pools with the highest sturgeon densities. Some fish caught and recaptured 20 or more years later in high density pools had an annual growth rate of one tenth of an inch. In Hell's Canyon, it can take 50 or more years to reach 7 feet in length, the size when females first start spawning. Some juvenile fish living in high-density holes grow so slow they will never reach maturity. This means that many sturgeon living in Hell's Canyon will not live long enough to reach spawning size, or if they do, the number of times they do spawn will be significantly less than those that live a portion of their life in the reservoir. It is hard to age a 10-foot sturgeon because they have no bony structures. Based on the growth rates observed, age is largely dependent on how long they lived in the lower granite reservoir or the free-flowing reach of Hell's Canyon. If they live a significant portion of their life in the reservoir where they grow faster, they could be anywhere from 60 to 90 years old. If they live in the free-flowing river their entire life, they may be over 100 years old.
It's a short, stocky. Yeah, he's. Look at that short tail. Look at that. His head is. Yeah, that's cool. In 2021, a pilot study was started to better understand growth rates and movement of juvenile sturgeon that were moved from high density holes downstream into the lower granite pool. The goal of the pilot study is to evaluate whether slow growing Hell's Canyon fish move to lower granite reservoir or remain there and whether their growth rates will improve if they stay. The hope is that they will remain in the reservoir long enough to grow through the 40 inch threshold. One reservoir fish, tagged in previous work, migrated 80 miles upstream into Hell's Canyon in less than two years. If this works, it may be a strategy to increase the number of sturgeon in this population that reach spawning size. Party successfully collected the information they sought. The data will help them and other resource managers make informed decisions to benefit these magnificent fish. In turn, anglers will have the opportunity to experience the thrill of catching and releasing a white sturgeon. No 10-foot sturgeon were caught during this effort. However, the 8-foot, 10-inch fish they did catch is still very memorable. 
In addition, it is good knowing that a 10 foot white sturgeon might be caught with just one more cast.